The beginning of the English settlement on free land in the Northern American area started in the successful attempt in colonizing on a small island off of North Carolina called Roanoke. In 1587, Sir Walter Raleigh was granted the permission to set off onto a journey by Queen Elizabeth I. When Sir, uh, when Sir Walter Raleigh colonized in free native land, 100 men were sent to live on Roanoke, but were deprived and moved back to England because of the harsh, starving winter. In an effort to add more people to the colony, Sir Francis Drake brought more people to the colony, including John White, the map, pa the map maker and artist. The reason for the importance of John White in history is because when the colony was in need of supplies. For that reason, White took a trip to England for supplies, and in his return he came to the abandoned colony of Roanoke. All that White could see from the left debris was Croatoan, carved into a tree. His theory of the lost colony was they have retreated to Croatan, which is 80 miles south. Now a day the mystery continues, although some logical theories of an abandoned and wiped out colony are that a hurricane wiped out the colony or the people were raided by natives. Jamestown. Jamestown is not named the first colony because of Roanoke that was settled before Jamestown in 1588. In 1607, Jamestown was settled by a group of men under the lead of Captain Christopher Newport. The colonization almost failed during the first year due to lack of food, lazy men who only wanted to search for gold, fear of the natives, a fire that destroyed the food supply, mosquitoes that carried diseases, and the Virginia Company expecting a large income. In 1608, approximately 400 additional colonists arrived and Captain John Smith took command. In 1609, the colony faced failure once again after Captain Smith returned to England due to injuries from a gunpowder explosion. The winter of 1609 to 1610, only 60 colonists survived. Then in the spring of 1610, Lord Delaware arrived with more colonists, food, and supplies. The House of Burgesses was organized and the population swelled to over 3,000. The king then revoked the Virginia Company propriety cha chart and established Virginia as a royal colony. In 1699, the Jamestown government was moved to William. Natives and Colonization Interaction between the natives and the English were usually under either war or trade. For the English, they were vigilant when there was a native, for they had some suspicion already of what if they attacked us. As for the natives, they were in mindset that they were to be friendly to the English. This was a bad combination for interaction between the two people, for at points in the settlement of the thirteen colonies, War broke out between the tribes and the English. Pilgrims versus Puritans. England had been a, pro a Protestant country since 1534. That is when King Henry VIII changed from the Roman Catholic Church and created the Anglican Church. The people of England were not happy with this, so Protestants were usually trialed and then either killed or treated harshly. This is when people wanted to come away from King Henry VIII rule. Some wanted to reform from the Anglican Church. These people were the Puritans, as some people wanted to completely break away from the Anglican Church and colonize on their own for religious freedom. These people were the Pilgrims. Therefore, the Pilgrims set a journey across the Atlantic to America to colonize for their religious freedom. When they finally spotted land, which was Cape Cod, it was during winter and they were north of their destination. Therefore, the pilgrims had to settle in that area, creating the Plymouth Colony. As for the Puritans in England, 1625, England was passed over to Charles I. Even so, 
Charles I decided not to reform the Anglican Church, and the torture and killings of Puritans continued. In 1629, the Puritans formed a group, the Massachusetts Bay Company. They received an invite to come establish a colony north of Plymouth. The Puritans chose John Winthrop to the colony's governor. In 1630, Winthrop brought 900 Puritans to Massachusetts Bay. Most of them settled in Boston, then so the growth of the Puritan communities was massive. In the 1630s, over 15,000 Puritans came over to America. The massive growth of the community led to Winthrop and his assistance cr to create laws and such. The colony had very little tolerance for Protestants, so this led to colonizing of other colonies. Massachusetts A Puritan, John Winthrop, led the colony of Massachusetts in 1630. He led 900 people to Massachusetts and settled there, and so did more Puritans come to Massachusetts. It was just a large Puritan community, so Massachusetts was created for the purpose of religious freedom. The land was very uneven and had many hills. The major economic activities for Massachusetts were fishing, corn, livestock, shipbuilding, and lumbering. New Hampshire In 1638, John Wheelwright led a group of dissidents from Massachusetts to the north. They founded the town of Exeter in New Hampshire. The same year, a group of Puritans settled Hampton. The colony of New Hampshire became fully independent of Massachusetts in 1679. New Hampshire's main economic activities were in textiles and shipbuilding, as well as growing potatoes and fishing. The land of New Hampshire had the normal temperatures as all of the New England colonies, which were cooler, which can reach 6 degrees in the winter, and 70s as the hottest temperatures in the summers. Rhode Island In Massachusetts, a man named Roger Williams, a minister, was banned from Massachusetts because he believed that people should not be killed because they didn't like the religion of the colony, nor tortured or hated. Government should not make people practice religion in a certain way. He then was banished. He later then created the colony of Rhode Island, Connecticut. There was fertile soil in the Connecticut River Valley, south of Massachusetts. The soil was better than the soil of Boston, so in the 1630s they started to colonize in that area. Thomas Hooker didn't like how Massachusetts was ran by Winthrop, so in 1636 he created his own town of Hartford. Three years after the town Hartford was founded, Windsor and Wethersfield decided to create the colony of Connecticut. New York. Originally the land was on, on a large colony founded and ran by Dutch settlers in 1624 for the purpose of trading. The colony was named New Amsterdam. The land was well, for they had the coast for excellent harbors and trade. Therefore the English wanted the land and they attacked the colony. The English successfully sieged the colony and the Dutch surrendered. The king, Charles II, gave the land to the Duke of York. For the reason of the name of King Charles' second brother's name, the colony was named New York. New Jersey and Delaware The Duke of York gave away the southern part of his colony to Lord John Berkeley and Sir George Carteret. Lord John Berkeley and Sir George then named their colony New Jersey. New Jersey was a place for a diversity of people, much like New York, but New Jersey never had a strong harbor. The land was eventually given to the king, for Berkeley gave his land away in 1674 and George in 1682 because they did not receive as much profit as needed. Pennsylvania In 1680, 
William Penn presented a plan to King Charles for the establishment of a new colony in America with the money left from William Penn's wealthy father's inheritance. The king agreed so, so, the, so they created the Pennsylvania colony west of New Jersey. William Penn fitted with a group of Quakers. Quakers were pacifists and also different beliefs of God than others. In Pennsylvania, Penn is hoping to create a colony where he could practice his beliefs freely. In 1682, he sailed to Pennsylvania to check up on his colony. The colony had treaties with the local natives as well as the first constitution. Virginia Virginia was the royal colony developed from Jamestown, and it was meant for expanding land for in England in 1607. Virginia had a main industry of tobacco, wheat, and corn. It was founded by John Smith at Jamestown. Maryland George Calvert wanted to create a colony in which Catholics can be free in practicing their beliefs. That came true, for in 1632, Calvert used that idea to craft Maryland. They found land to settle at, up the Potomac River. When they started, Maryland focused in the tobacco farming and cropping corn as well. Baltimore was founded in 1729 and was Maryland's port. North and South Carolina In 1663, King Charles II created a colony south of Virginia. It was called Carolina. The colony was handed to a group of eight members of his court. They hoped to gain money by renting and selling land. They then did not last long as one, when colonists started to split apart creating the northern and southern Carolinas. The northern part was better fertile and had a good harbor. Then deerskin, lumber, and beef flourished, and then rice soon became the colony's leading crop. Soon then, a woman named Eliza Lucas developed a new important crop, indigo. It was used to dye textiles. The southern part of the Carolinas was mostly African slaves who would work to produce sugar or rice fields. There were so many slaves that in 1708, more than half the populations were slaves. Then in 1729, the settlers turned over the colonies into two royal colonies. Georgia As in the 13 colonies, Georgia was the last. James Oglethorpe was a general for the British. Britain and Spain were in a war, and Oglethorpe created Georgia as a military barrier from Spanish Florida in 1733. The colony was also in hope for religious freedom because Oglethorpe wanted the people to be hardworking, independent, and such. Slaves versus indentured servants Slaves were African American and were brought from Africa to the colonies and were sold, traded, and bought. They were went as property. All colonies at some point had slaves, but eventually the northern colonies were against and the southern colonies continued their acts of slavery. Indentured servants were in repaid for their service by their masters by being fed and given shelter. Also, they would, get, they would serve in terms of years, as for slaves were permanently to give service to their master. <laughs>